Hey, Heath. Hey, Kevin. Ooh, what have you brought us here? <laughs> Check this out. So I wanted to go over circuit breakers today, and one of the big things is explaining why they trip and how they trip. Okay, and so uh, I guess we all know that the circuit breakers tend to be in the service panel. Yep. The idea is power is coming from the streets, going to the panel, and then each one of these is a different circuit. Sure. That? Those are our branch circuits that spread out through the house. And so this is where the protection starts. Correct. What are we protecting against? So we want to design a system so it's operating properly. We want to make sure that there's perfect coordination in it, and we start with the breaker size, matches the wire size, matches what's being utilized. Okay. So if I look at an individual breaker and I see a 15 on mm -hmm. it, that refers to? 15 amps. Is that basically like the load of that individual circuit? It is, and we're going to see 15 amps on a lot of different things, but typically we're going to see it on lighting, light loads, things like that. We're going to see a 20 on something a little heavier. You'll see the 20s in the kitchens, bathrooms, places where you might have the appliances. Gotcha, okay. And, and you're saying that this breaker here goes with a particular type of wire versus this one, which goes with a different type of wire. It does. So we want that 15 amp on a 14 gauge wire. We want to make sure that's protected properly. We don't want to put something bigger on that 14 gauge wire. So what happens if we have too much load on a circuit? If everything's done correctly, that breaker will trip. Gotcha. So if it exceeds that 15 amp for a certain amount of time, the system will shut down and protect it from overheating. Oh, overheating's the concern? Right. So the wire, if it's sized accordingly and we start drawing too much current through that, that wire is going to start to get warm. And if the breaker doesn't trip, it can really have an issue. So we've got a couple things plugged in, and then someone turns on the hairdryer, it pops, and right. that's pulling too much. That's a good, great example. Exactly. And so if it is tripping, it definitely could be causing an issue you want to take a look at. Nuisance, it. but it's protecting us, so right. a good thing. Okay. So we'll start with this. You're plugging in which you we'll plug little, that, little uh, space heater. Little space heater, which yeah. a lot of people have in the winter. And this is a 15-amp circuit. 15-amp circuit. You can see how much power this thing really draws. Whoa. So yeah. it's using almost the entire circuit with just one device into one part of the receptacle. Right. And you have probably no idea that it's using that much. So you can see we kind of settled down to about 12. What happens if we add to it? So now you are plugging in a heat gun, yeah. which is going to pull a lot. Yeah. Ooh, Picture if it right were a hair dryer or anything else or another heater. Almost doubled. So we've right. jumped from 12 amps to up 20, to 23 exactly. on a 15 amps. Wait a second, though. <laughs> Hang on. Where's my Why protection? Where's my right. protection? So it's not instant. There is a small time delay because of startup of certain equipment. Uh, picture an air conditioning unit outside or using a saw. When you first turn that on, you get a big inrush and then it settles back down. So the breaker doesn't want to pop when it sees that. It wants to let it do its thing and get comfortable and be where it wants to be. So it's actually pretty smart. It, it knows is. that you might have a spike. Exactly. It's really measuring sort of steady state. The constant, yeah. Okay. So and, if this and, stays like this too long, that will shut down. Or, up, oh, there it goes. And there it goes. Just like we want it. So it did its job. But if it continues to happen, we can't sort of figure it out. Call someone. Because you're going to do going what? On. Something's right. going on. Okay. So moving down your panel right here, so this guy is? That's a GFCI breaker. GFCI, you've told us about before, ground fault interruption current. Exactly. Ground fault circuit interrupter. Circuit interrupter. And what that's Thank looking you. for is an imbalance in the system. So it wants to see the same amount of current going out and coming back. Cool. Okay. Uh, and then the last one you've got here? AFCI, arc fault. Relatively new. Yeah. Doesn't operate the same way as that. Still protects you from the overload, just like anything else. But now it looks for an arc. So say you damaged a wire or a wire was damaged from putting a nail through it, hanging a picture, mm. or an appliance was having an issue, but you can't see it. And it's creating a small arc in there. This looks for that signature and shuts it down. I didn't realize that they were this intelligent, that this one can determine that there's a spike but waits for the steady state, mm -hmm. that this one knows to look for your leakage, whereas this one looks to know for your arc. Right. And you can do an all-in-one that'll do everything at the same time. So what we do to check these as well is we know what the overload is, but how do we test the GFCI or the AFCI? Mm. We'll use a tester like this, and we can show that they look for different things. So you're in the GFCI. So I'm in the GFCI. I'm going to trip the GFCI. Ooh, shuts it down. Goes, just like that. Let me reset this for you. So that simulated an imbalance, shut it down, did its job. Okay. If I treat it like an AFCI, I don't get anything. Nothing. Because it's not looking for AFCI. It's not looking for it. You can tell that it's looking for something totally different, and they have very different signatures. Okay. Now this one's looking for AFCI. This one's fault. looking. So if I try the GFCI on that one. Doesn't know what you're doing. Doesn't know. It's all Greek. Ooh. Arc fault, it knows. So who uses a tester like that? Just you or? No, inspectors might carry it to test the circuits uh -huh. to make sure they're wired properly and doing what they should, but we use them as well. If we're troubleshooting, if we go into a home that that breaker is causing an issue, we can see if it's operating properly, what else is connected, that kind of thing. Very, very nice, Heath. All right, I appreciate it. That's good. All right, thanks. All right. Don't have one. Thanks for watching. 
This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.